What's up with it, bro? What's up, bro? Not much. Introduce yourself let people know who you are. My name is Quan. Uh, I don't, I don't be really on nothing, though. I just, <laughs> I just be chilling, staying out the way. Just came home from the Fed bid. So I'm just trying to stay out the way. You know what I'm saying? Live life, enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. We'll we get into all you know. We can come home and reason to all that uh, later on in, um, in the interview. But just start from the beginning. Um, are you originally from St. Louis? Yeah, I was. I came here when I was two. My people from Vietnam, so we came here when I was two, and I just grew up here since I'm 26 now. So yeah, basically you you was raised here, but you was born. Here yeah, I was born. I was born in Vietnam, but I came here when I was two. Okay, I've just okay. been in St. Louis all my life. What part of St. Louis were you raised in? I'm from the South Side. Okay. Yeah. okay that makes sense. You know, Mixed. South City is majority, you know, yeah. mixed cultures down there. Yeah. Compared to other sides of the city. Um, how was it growing up in St. Louis? Uh, it was different because I'm the only Asian. Like, in school, I was the only Asian. So it was just like, you know, everybody, like, it was a whole bunch of haters. But there's a whole bunch of people that like was cool with me, you know what I'm saying, rock with me and stuff too. So I mean it, it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? It's give it is what it is. Yeah. It's mixed bobs. Which school did you go to? Which high school did you go to? I went to Roseville. Oh man, that's it's enough. Yeah, but I had got kicked out my senior year and I had went to Hazelwood Central for four months. And then I got kicked out of there too. <laughs> but that's because I have I have my own crib, so I was on some. I ain't got to go to school. I can. I just, I was going to school just to bring like females back. Oh, yeah. Just you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I I was really wasn't even going to school for real, but they ended up uh, just kicking me out for not having enough attendance. Yeah, so you say you going to hope you going to school just to get the chicks and stuff. Yeah, I was just I was chilling. I was like doing my own thing. Yeah. So it just um you know. What society got a stereotype on Asians? Yeah, they deem them as far as like they, you know, hair strong when it comes to school and math and all that. Man, I don't, I don't know. I'll be, I'll be too outside. I'll be, I, don't, I don't care about that school. <laughs> <laughs> I graduated when I came home from prison. I was nineteen when I went in. I came home at twenty one, but in prison they make you go to school. Or you get written up and they pull your date. So I was I had to wake up at six thirty every morning and go to school. And then when I came home, I was like, I, I finished every, all my classes in prison. I had one level with social studies. So I came home and I was like, let me just get it. And I graduated. So from Sumner. Okay. Yeah. Well, um it was was it Ace? Yeah, Ace. Okay, yeah. yeah. Alternative school. Alternative school, yeah. Yeah. I don't know a few people that graduated from there. Yeah. How was your household with you been I guess compared to you know you going to Roosevelt and then you go home to your family, is uh -huh. it a different atmosphere once you get home? Are they more strict on you or things like that? For real, like growing up, it was just my mom, my pops and dad. They went in the my I had uh my pops and my brother. They they went in the pits. They stayed in California, so it was just me and my mom. So my mom just come to the United States not knowing no English. She worked like crazy. Just to like make sure she can pay the rent. No, no, no lights get cut off. You know what I'm saying? So we had heat on, all food on the table and stuff. So she worked from like 12 hour shifts from like 8 to 8. So when I came home, nobody was there. So I, I used to just be out kicking with the homeboys at they mama house. You know what I'm saying? I'm calling they mama mamas. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they embraced me like they was they, I was their son. Yeah. Yeah. So. So I'm guessing that's how you kind of, I guess, got eat. Though Asians always have that swag about them. Yeah, I'm sure that's how you got the influence by hanging around your friends outside of. Yeah, home. like like my mom been working all my life, so she she's working right now as we speak. So with that being said, like I never really get to see her. You know what I'm saying? She didn't take no days off. She just had to make sure that she didn't just brought me here and 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 we all messed up. You know what I'm saying? We all. Like all bad, you know what I'm saying? So she worked her butt off to make sure like everything's straight. Mm -hmm. So you know I respect her for it. Most definitely, respect mom do that. You know a lot of people can relate to that statement for sure. Yeah. Now when it comes to dating, I know you say you went to school just to get the women and all that. The Viet 
Vietnamese tradition is for the men anyway. You know, the men they court the women, take them out. You know, and nine times out of ten, they're not gonna really date a woman unless it's someone they pursuing to marry. Yeah, they would go through the whole thing, want to meet the parents, all that. Do you stick to that tradition or? Uh, nah, <laughs> nah, oh, uh, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, uh, I, uh, nah. <laughs> he said, he said, nah, nah. Um, no, Valentine's Day coming up, you got a situation going on right now, huh? Nah, no. I, I'm fresh home. You know, I just came oh, home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just came home like, like, like 40 days now. So, I'm just trying to get hang of life. You know what I'm saying? See Understandable. who hear from me and who not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, how was I seeing, like, um, on your Facebook that you was um, getting like fan mail and things like that while you was going away. Man, I got so much love. Like, when I left, I probably had like 4,000 some pictures. And these, like, I'm holding stacks and stacks of, I, I'm holding so much pictures. I would get, I'd get mail every single day. I'd get a whole bunch of letters from random people. So I, see, I'm, so when I was gone, I was watching Catfish. So I'll be seeing it and I'll be like, man, I'm not gonna get got, you know what I'm saying? So I'll be kind of bug annoyed a little bit on writing too many people back. Then when the pictures look too good to be true, I'll just be like, yeah, sell it to the homeboys or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But you selling pictures? Yeah, you know, that's a hustle in there. They, they, man, that's. It makes sense. It made, I got some problems locked up. Yeah, so you know what I'm saying? Everybody wanna see like, you know what I'm saying? Stuff they can't see in the world. Yeah. In there, you know what I'm saying? So, but now I was getting, I, I got a lot of love. Like, I guess my pictures and everything was going viral. I was getting people from like Minnesota, uh, Oklahoma, Ohio, California, New York, just random places. And they'll reach out to me like, hey, I hope you good. You know what I'm saying? Call me if you want to, text me. You know what I'm saying? Here's some pictures, this is what I look like. Yeah. It was a whole bunch of mail. It was cool though. Yeah, yeah. I said that's how I originally sent you over, you know, your pictures and stuff circulating over social media. Yeah. Now, I know, I, like I said, I got some partners that's locked away, you know, going away for for the time being. I know how they be telling me, oh, they trying to get them chicks, man. They trying to. So were you yeah. like playing the phone? Like some of the chicks, you might have some, you know. Yeah. Uh, I was going to visit almost every weekend, and and when I go to visit, it'd be like. See, they was contact business, so I can hug you, kiss you, touch you, you know what I'm saying? Everything. I can sit there and eat with you. So what I do is, I, I like, I had, like, a couple of chicks from Chicago come down. Like, man, like, hey, look, Saturday, this your day. Come, you know what I'm saying? Come see me, take pictures with them. I got a whole bunch of visiting pictures also. Mm -hmm. But I just, uh, I don't want to post it because now those females are in relationships. Uh, and, you know, I'm not that type of, you know what I'm saying? Yes, to, yes. But they, they they was holding me down. They was uh keeping a hundred with me. I'm not gonna lie, they was keeping a hundred with me. Um I, I'm asking you this. Now were you just getting some some you know, I don't, I don't everybody beautiful in their own way. I'm just asking you, were you getting some baddies coming through? Uh Nah. I mean <laughs> yeah and nah like it'll probably be like a few good ones. Like i am like, dang, she far. And then the other ones would be like Okay, I see why you, you know what I'm saying? I see why you reached out to me. Type shit, type yeah. shit. Okay, um, we're getting to like, what exactly led you to get into the situation that kept you away from the streets? All right, so, um, so, all right, so, March 2nd was uh, my home went on hood day. So we in the club with him. He on a run for a second degree murder. And I'm not knowing he's on a run, so I'm in pictures with him. And we hold big old knots, his money, bottles, you know what I'm saying? We just turned up in the club. Long story short, uh, maybe like the police kicked my house April 10th. So from that time being, I don't know when they seen the pictures, but when that from that time being, I guess they was investigating on bro case. For some somehow I got tied up in it. When they kicked the house, they had a, a body attachment. So they looked for they, they was looking for him. 
So when they kicked the house, they looked for him. He wasn't there. Me being dumb, I had guns, dope, money sitting on the the kitchen table, like the, the, the sink area, like right there in plain view. I remember to this day, because when they kicked the house, it was uh, it was like 12 police officers. It was like 8 in the morning. I literally just came home. My, my ex at the time was stripping. So we literally just came home at like 6 in the morning, 7 in the morning, probably got done eating. And we probably got an hour of sleep when they raided the house. I just remember he, he was like, uh, uh, we looking for somebody. We got a, 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 a body attachment, a warrant. He's showing it. Wasn't nobody there but me and my ex at the time. So when he seen it, he seen with nobody there. He said, oh, you on probation, aren't you? You ain't supposed to have this gun and these drugs. He said, you know, I'll be right back. They zip, they didn't even handcuff me. They, they zip tied me, had me in my boxes sitting out in the cold. This is in April, so it was still cold. Out in front of my house. And they, I guess, I don't know who he called. He called a judge or he called something. But 30 minutes later, they came back with a warrant. And next thing I know, I'm, I'm down. Me and uh, my, my co defendant was, at the time was my ex. You know what I'm saying? That was my co defendant. But she could have got probation. Because the gun was like in her name. This case is closed now, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. the gun was her name and it was like petty dope. It was like 12 grams, like zipped up. Like, I mean, like bagged up. So it wasn't nothing. She could have got probation for it. She boo hoo crying, like, man, I'm, I'm trying to be a nurse. I'm trying to pursue something with my life. So I'm so, I'm so knowing, I'm like, man, if she tell on me, I could get more time than what I'm looking at right now with this gun and dope. So I'll take the case. Just took it all. Just took it, like, I know I could've got more time if she told on other cases. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, this is petty. I'm not thinking that I'm gonna get five years. I'm thinking I'm gonna get like 18 months, 24 months. There's barely any dope. And this gun is, is registered to her, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, I'm, I'm getting 18 months, 24 months, anywhere around it. When they came, gun protecting dope, mandatory five. I just, I just sat back like, dang, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I did my time. Yeah. It's over now. Now, while you was in there, I guess going through the case, fighting the case or whatever. You know, when you locked up and got them jailhouse lawyers, man, they said, "Oh, you gonna get 20 years. You, you ain't never getting out." Yeah. How was your mindset to keep them out your mind? Like, keep that type of stretch out your life. To be honest, like. My home, see, so when I went in, my, my, my bond, I mean, my, my bond, my lawyer ended up being $10,000. My homeboy them put a lot of the money up. And I still had a little money on the streets, like moving around and stuff. So a lot of the money went to the lawyer. The lawyer promising me, worst kind of worst, I'll just get five. So the whole time in my mind, I'm like, I'm thinking in my head, like, I'm, I'm gonna get five. I'm gonna get five. And, and that was it, because that was mandatory. You know what I'm saying? Mandatory five. She's like, she's like, this is your first fair case. I'm going to get you five. You're going to get five. You know what I'm saying? I paid 10000 for this lady. So she's like, I'm going to get you five. So I, I don't listen to the rumors. I don't listen to what people, other people got going on. Because these people, they, they facing that drama. So they really just trying to drag people down and make, it, and make you feel, make me feel like how you feel. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to do that to me. Like I said, and then I had I had a lot of family support. Like I, I can call my mom anytime she'll answer the phone. Though she don't speak English, she don't know how to put money on my books. She don't really know how to use the phone up, but she know how to answer. So I have to call her, talk to her. You know what I'm saying? She'll just keep my spirits up. Or I'll call my cousin, uh, Ling Ling yeah. on Instagram. Yeah, so I uh I call her. She's always answering, making sure I eat, make sure I got money in my books. Some of the homeboys answer, you know what I'm saying? I, it was only a certain few that I call all the time, but I know they always answer. So, you know what I'm saying? That's, that, that's what helped me stay sane, stay calm, like family. That family support, for real. Yeah, yeah. Most definitely. I've been there. I've been in that situation like you said. You have people that oh, I'm going to do this for you. I got you, but like you said, yeah, you got to have the one that's really there for you. Just stick to that. Yeah. And see, like, th that's crazy because people will kill a friendship just like that. Like, I done had homeboys that I grew up since we was babies with, like since we was little kids. And then I'll call just to check on them, see how they doing, what they been up to. And they'll tell me like, yeah, bro, I'm a, you need some money? 
I'd be like, nah, I'm cool. I don't need no money. I'm good right now. They'd be like, nah, you sure? I'm like, I'm positive, bro. Take care of your kids. Take care of you. You know what I'm saying? Then they'd be like, all right, all right. Then I'll call, I'll call a week later just, just to see how they doing. You know what I'm saying? They'd be like, look, bro. I remember one time my homeboy was my homeboy. He like, yeah, I got you Friday when I get paid. Friday came. Nothing. I call on Sundays just to check up on him. All every Sunday I call just like one time a week, you know what I'm saying? So I end up calling that Sunday, he ignored my call. Then I called the next Sunday, he still ignored my call. You just killed our friendship Same when I just way. for no reason. Just keeping it real. And and I and I told you as many times I don't need it. But yeah. you you lied to me. Just I'm trying trying to be cool. And then you when you didn't fall through, you felt like you felt bad about it. Mm. And you just really killed my your friendship with me. And I, I still remember, like, I talk to him now, but it don't be like, I know I can't depend on you, because I know your word ain't nothing. Yeah. Feel me, so. Now, when did you first go in? Or 2000? Uh, I went in in 2018. Wait, wait, my first case, I came, I went in uh, 20, 2015. Mm -hmm. That was my state case. Okay. Then I came home in 2017. Then I went in 2018. I was only out for 14 months. Okay, and that was the, uh, you did the fair bit yeah. from 18. Yeah. In the midst of that, I know that you lost your grandmother. Oh, yeah. How was that not being able to be there for your family and your mother? Man, uh, man, oh, bro, I wasn't ready for this. Uh. Uh, my mama. Uh, my mama. She uh. She came. She came to the jail, and and this this when I, I was supposed to go to court the next month for my sentencing. I still remember because this was in July. I got sentenced in August, like right before my birthday, and my mama came like. My mama came with tears. This at this at ten at night. Visits is over at nine, so she come in. I still remember to this day the, the CO that was working, Miss Sullivan. She she even had to do it, but she she let my mama come up for three four minutes, and I'm talking to her behind the glass, and my mama had tears just running down her eyes. She even know how to like talk to me because she know that'll stress me out. And she just told me like. Your grandma just passed, and I and I'm like, and it was so much going on. I didn't even know how to take it. I just, I just, I stood there and just watched my mama cry. I, I couldn't. I, I ain't had no tears come out, cause I, I'm fighting this fair case, about to get sentenced. Then, like a month before that, my homeboy had passed, and then now my grandma passing. So I had so much stuff on my mind, and I, 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 I was hurt behind that, bro. I think I ended up getting a fight like, like, like five days later. I ended up crashing out. Somebody said something, and I just ended up crashing out. I ended up going to the hole, and I did like two weeks in the hole, and I was just sit, sitting back there, like pacing back and forth. I I was losing it. I was losing it because I couldn't call my mom because she took a flight back to Vietnam just to bury my granny. I, and I I, ain't, I couldn't just call nobody because people ain't in my shoe, so they'll never feel my pain. You know what I'm saying? They, they can't call home and I can't come home and hug my mama and be like, man, like we'll get through this together. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I still got your back. You still got mine. That's all we need. We just need each other. They couldn't do that. So and then my homeboys, they just lost their homeboy. You know what I'm saying? Like a month before. So everybody feeling pain. So I was just really in a cell by myself. Like I was hurting, bro. Man, I was hurting. Like. Hurt. I know that you said you got into a fight a few days after that. I'm sure, like you said, that was a relief to get that built up tension out of you. Yep. While you was in there, did you read any books or anything to kind of release your mind away from everything that was going on outside? Yeah, I was a. Uh, I was trying to read like psychology books. You know what I'm saying? Help help me just be a better thinker. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like I wasn't. Re I don't read hood urban books. Just because that don't get me nowhere. I don't, I seen all that, bro. I been had a cause. I had my own crib. I had money. Like, 
I had females. Like, this, this nothing. Like, I don't read the urban books because half them dudes that write it, bro, they never lived it. They ain't never been there. They don't, they don't even know what be going on. They just go off movies and, and stuff like that. They ain't never been on the other side of that wall. So I don't, I don't even read that type of stuff, bro. I just try to, like, get my mind in order, like, read, like, like self-help books. You know what I'm saying? How I can be a better thinker, be a better man, be a better person. You know what I'm saying? That's all I was reading. But other than that, I, just, I try to stay focused. I try to keep my mind. I don't. I didn't like using a phone for real because I'm not going to waste this money. And then when I hang up on you, I'm still back in here. So I just, I just try to stay to myself. You know, what really helped me was music. I have my MP3 player, buy music all the time, just listen to music. Just that helped me through my time, cause it's I love music, bro. Because it's a it's a song for every mood. Yeah. No matter how you feeling, it's a song for that. So that's all I be on. Yeah. I know you was um, actually pursuing music yourself before you went in. What happened with that? Uh, <laughs> for real, to be honest, like I I don't know how to rap, sing, none of that. But my people and them, they they like, bro. You you can make it out, and and if when you make it out, we know you gonna come back and get us. Like, and they was just pushing me like, man, bro, like, put put what you, put put what you been through, put what you live, put where you been at, put all that in lyrics, and we'll we'll back it up. We'll pay for whatever we need to pay for, and but I I never took it serious just because like. I can't even take myself serious, but I've been thinking about it, like just be like, cause people want to know what I've been through. Like everybody, it's so interesting to them because like I'm an Asian and I'm still here, and I, I've been through a lot of stuff and I'm still here. You know what I'm saying? So, but I ain't never really took it serious or nothing like that. Yeah. Okay. Now that you're home, I know you're still going through the transition to get back. Outside, I know you just also celebrated um, Vietnam, Vietnamese New Year yesterday. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What are your plans now that you're out? Uh, Happy um, New Year, also. Oh, thanks, bro. <laughs> Happy New Year's. Uh, to be honest, our New Year's was yesterday, and we, like, in my culture, we we look at it like we eat good. You know, what I'm saying we be around our family. Because that's how you bring the New Year's in, you know what I'm saying? And like, family's everything to me. Because when I was just gone, my family was all I got. You know what I'm saying? The females that come in my life, they'll leave. You know what I'm saying? They'll be here for a couple while, a couple weeks, a couple months, then they'll leave, come back. But my family always stayed with me. And then like, you know, we ate good yesterday. Ate to the point where I'm like, I'm full. I couldn't even move, bro. But it was a good. It was a good way to bring in New Year's. That, and then, like, to be honest, 2022, I just, I miss on so much. I'm just, I feel like I'm playing catch up. But to be honest, I'm just taking it one day at a time. You know what I'm saying? Like, the money's not no issue. You know what I'm saying? But so, with that being said, like, I just want to feel life again. Because a lot of stuff's new to me. Like, like, I, like, going to the refrigerator, opening it up, and getting stuff out of the refrigerator feels new, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I ain't seen that in a while. You was in the toilet by myself. That feel new. You know what I'm saying? Like laying in a bed. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just, to be honest, I don't have any big plans right now. I just want to just enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? Because people people will sit there and be like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. But they don't really be on it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to sit here and just lie. I, I really want to just get back into the motion of things. You know what I'm saying? How I feel to ride, drive a car. How I feel to be around people, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then like this COVID stuff, this is so different. Watching everybody with mask on, hoodie up. I'll be like, I'll be paranoid. I'll be walking like, bro, you too close to me. What you on? You know what I'm saying? They're like coming where I just came from. This is like, why are you so close to me? Or like, why are you almost bump me and you ain't say excuse me? You know what I'm saying? I'd be in the mall, really. Just like, man, bro, you too close to me. Say excuse me. You know, I'd be trying to tell people that, but they'd be looking at me like, I'm just crazy. But I'll just be like, nah, it's just respect yeah. at, the end, at the end of the day. So I'm just, to be honest, to answer your question, I'm just, uh, 
I'm just really just trying to get back in life. You know what I'm saying? Have a feel for it. Yes, last question here. You know, with all your experiences throughout life, you know, from growing up in South City of St. Louis, and also even your bits from, you know, from 15, 17, 18, you know, going in and out of um, jail, yeah. prison. What word of advice can you leave someone who may be walking in similar shoes as you? Take your time. Take your time, cause I'm not gonna lie, that fast money come with slow time, and then you you, you don't want to be this 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 how I look at it right now. And to this day, like to this day, I look at it like you can have all that money and get so much time. You you can make people chasing a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, and then you get ten years, you get five years, seven, eight. You could make that. All within there and still live a free life. But now you just made this hundred thousand and you just went in for five. You just lost five years of your life, ten years of your life. You would never get back. Then you don't know what'll happen within them years. You know what I'm saying? So my best advice is just take it one day at a time. Take your time. Enjoy it. I enjoy everything I like I enjoy everything. Like even this interview with you, I enjoy it. Just because like I'm here, you know what I'm saying? Like and it's an opportunity because I just I was just in a cell not being able to get this opportunity. So to be honest, everybody that's out there and that they like they trying to live this fast life, they trying to do do their thing, get this money, that money gonna come. That money gonna come. You chasing something and when you get it, if you get time for it, it's not worth it because you just basically did everything backwards. You got all this money, Fed's gonna come get it. Now you just sitting doing this time. It's not that's less than minimum ways. Yeah, that's less than minimum wage. You made a hundred thousand, got five years. I heard somebody said years ago, like um, if you work at McDonald's and save up your checks, you'll make the same what you're trying to get on the streets, and more than what you get trying to get on the streets yeah. here. <laughs> and see, like, like that's what I'm saying. Like, and then, like, two years of balling, ten years in the feds, that's not worth it. That don't even balance. That balance ain't even a good balance. So you know, say to everybody who who just who. Jamming and doing their thing, man. Just be careful. Put that money up. Do something with it. Because when the feds come, they gonna definitely come. They gonna definitely come, bro. Shout out to those social media. Let people know they can find you at. All right, so I just came home. So I just made everything. Uh, I just made a TikTok. My TikTok is Big Quan Banks. B I G Q U A N B A N K S. And then my Instagram is the same thing. Big Quan Banks. My Facebook is Quan Banks, and my Snap is uh, L U H Q U A N F O B.